Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Lifestyle with Dr. Moby. I'm Dr. Moby and today we have a great guest. And we are going to discuss an important topic and today's topic is COVID, especially chronic COVID or COVID long haulers. As you know, COVID is affecting all over and it's a pandemic, but 10 to 30% of patients have persistent symptoms, even the COVID, when COVID is gone. And it is important to realize that some of the most common symptoms which we see in practice uh, could be loss of smell, as well as taste, shortness of breath and fatigue. And it can affect heart, brain, as well as other organs. And let's discuss that with board certified juridician, Dr. Jamil Ahmed. And he had great message. And let's listen his message in its entirety. Hello, this is Dr. Ahmed. And we talk about post COVID symptoms. As you know, the COVID is not going to leave us alone. It is coming back like a walkable game, not only here, but all over the world. So we have to be conscious about the disease, although it is under control right now, but it's not over. It has changed everything, the way we do our business, go to the office, or how we deal with our friends and the family. Hopefully, this 4th of July will be better than last year. It seems that's the way it's gonna be. It is almost unbelievable that it is already almost two years since it all started. In 2019, and to now is 221, almost 3 million people died all over the world. Just in the United States, we had over half a million deaths. So that's a lot of people, vulnerable people, older people, and uh, hardworking people, it doesn't matter. People got the disease and died. With the preventive measures, vaccine, where we are able to control the disease a little bit and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's not over yet. Nowadays, we are hearing a term called post-COVID syndrome, or symptom that happens after you get cured from COVID-19 infection. Some people call it long COVID. Somebody calls it a long hauler. It all means the same. You are having symptoms, but you're not positive for COVID-19 anymore. It happened to people who are asymptomatic at the time of the disease after 30 days, 90 days, they're having symptoms. Same to the way other people will have for COVID. Almost 23% of the people who went to the hospital and admitted got post-COVID symptoms. So it is a, uh, something that you have to be aware of when the disease is over. A lot of people ask about what are the symptoms? It is almost the same symptoms that you'll get when you had the COVID, like pain, breathing problem, you have trouble breathing, you have difficulty walking on the steps because you're short of breath, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, fatigue, malaise, anxiety, depression, almost 25% people 
will develop anxiety and depression. Other thing is like deep vein thrombosis, endocarditis. It is one to two percent of chance developing endocarditis from the coronavirus. Compared to if you get endocarditis from vaccine shot, it will be one to one hundred thousand. So it's pretty rare. I know that people get upset when they worry about these things. But you have to think about benefit and side effect and things like that. Then you have the chance for the stroke and diabetes mellitus. CDC has some diagnosis, not diagnosis, also symptoms listed. One of them are one of them is a difficulty with concentration. They call brain fog. They have trouble concentration, studying, and problem with the memory. Then has the fatigue, palpitation, chest pain, shortness of breath, cough, joint pain, fever. They have found that people who did a lot of exercise they tend to have worsening of the symptoms. Same thing with the mental exhaustion. So that is one thing to keep in mind because we think that we should do exercise to get better faster. For temporarily it can make it worse. That's okay. How long it will last? There's no definite number to tell, but most of the consensus is that it will last approximately six months. Some people may last over a year. So it is variable depending on the person and we don't know what are the variables that will make the difference. There's also a few theories why people get these symptoms when you're not having any infection anymore. Theory is that there is changes in gene expression in our body. It is a complicated subject. And there is the immune system that we have to fight back disease are at higher level and causing some of the symptoms from our own body. Without that disease, people, our system is still fighting back. There is, there is a question about post-traumatic stress disorder. It's very much possible, you know, having a COVID and not knowing whether you're going to die or live, it can cause a lot of stress and everybody is not same. So some people will have stress disorder. Then question is, what do you do? You come back off, out of the infection and you're having some of the symptoms still lingering best thing will be to start with nutrition, good nutrition, protein, vitamins. There's no proof that they're going to make any difference, but I think it will be a safe bet. Rest when you need it, because a lot of people have, have issue with the hypersomnia. They need a little bit more sleep. Do not smoke if you are a smoker because you're going to make it worse. Then it's physical therapy. If you need a mental health support, see a psychiatrist or psychologist because there is high incidence of anxiety and depression, post-COVID issues. Then you have to see a lung doctor to check for a pulmonary function test in case uh, you continue to have issue of breathing problems or exertional dyspnea. Then for the brain fog, neuropathy or tingling or numbness, weakness, you may have to see a neurologist for evaluation just to make sure that you are not missing something else while we are worrying about other things. For some people, it may last lifelong. 
we are not sure about the percentage, but maybe around 10% may have long post-COVID symptoms. But best thing is to prevent COVID-19 infection. You are already doing it. You are washing your hand. You are maintaining social isolation. Also, as a um, using the mask, using the sanitizer, and you are becoming more proactive to get the vaccine, which is very very important, because one stitch in time will save nine. We all know that, and it still applies. With 90% success rate with the vaccine, I think everybody should jump on it. Because we know that post-COVID syndrome is a lifelong issue for some people. And for six months to a year, it can happen to a lot of people. So it is never too late to get the vaccine to avoid COVID-19 infection. I think it is important that you consider this. It is no harm being late than never. Thank you very much.